Okay, all right. So I don't know if you noticed by now, I'm making three videos in the same day in a row because you can tell I'm wearing the same shirt. <laughs> so, okay, all right. So here's what we're gonna do. Let's, let's really try to wrap up the unit, okay? So yesterday we talked about adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing with rationals, but not doing it per se, but to tell whether the answer is going to be rational or irrational. So I know that was a lot of information. So uh, today I wanna just show, show you some practice questions and then afterwards I have one more thing to tell you and that's cubic roots, okay? So as soon as we talk about that, then we're gonna be okay, all right? So let's get started. Okay, all right, so today is unit one day five, Tuesday, September 29th. It's been very hard for me to keep track of these, uh, these dates. So this is why I, sometimes it's easier for me to make all the videos at the same time so I could keep track because by tomorrow I won't remember. Okay, let's get to it. All right, so yesterday we had a very, uh, we had a lesson that had a lot of information. I know that's a lot of information, but let's recap very quickly before we practice. Okay, so again, Almost always, all right, when you add, let me make this point even stronger. You will always have an irrational answer when you add or subtract two irrational numbers. Let me write this out, actually, let me use a different color. All right, I'm gonna use I and R. Irrational plus irrational is irrational. Right, irrational plus rational, right? Hold on, let me double check also, right? When you add an irrational number, the sum is irrational, that's correct, right? Irrational, all right? Now, when I say add, I just mean also add or subtract, okay? Let me write like that, okay? Hopefully that won't confuse you, right? Except for this, right? Except, this is the only exception, but guys, they won't ask you this on the regions. So for now, take this at my word, okay? And also what I proved to you yesterday, okay? But always keep in the back of your mind because I don't want you to hold things that, I don't want you to have knowledge in your mind that are actually untrue. I don't want to do that either. Like, so there's a, there's a knowledge you need to know for the regions and there's a knowledge that you need to know for yourself. All right, on the regions, irrational plus minus, plus or minus irrational is irrationals, all right? And when you have an irrational plus or minus irrational, still irrational, all right? But in your, in your mind, all right, deep in your mind, you know that this is the exception, okay? Now with multiplying, right, I already show you. It's not as strong a statement as the last one, because why? This was the exception. And based on the example I showed you yesterday, which was this one, they will see if you notice that, right? They will test you on this, okay? So that's what, that's what I want to prove to you, okay? So this one, you, this, you, you notice how I didn't say always? I didn't say always, right? I said you could have a rational, you can have an irrational number like here, but you could also have a rational number. So it's sometimes, the answer is sometimes. Okay, I hope I did a good enough job with that yesterday. Okay, with that said, let's practice. All right, so right now I can tell the, this is very glitchy right now. It's a lot of stop and stop stops and starts. So that means that the audio is also gonna come out very choppy. Okay, all right, let's try this one. All right, so let's take a look. So which expression results in a rational number? Um, well, you're just gonna try this out. So this is 11, right? 11 minus square root of 21. Now I'm just gonna work on this first. I don't wanna jump to conclusions because the last time I jumped to conclusion, I got number one wrong. So let me not repeat that again. So this one is this, right? I just simplified it here. This is 25 times two, square root of two actually, right? So that's five times five, square root of two, right? 
5 times 5 is 25, square root of 2, that's irrational. Alright, I know that for sure. This is tricky, not that tricky. So 6, right, divided by 225 is 15 times 15. So you got a fraction here. So let's see, 3, 2 is 6, 3 times, right, 2 fifths, right? That is, that is the definition of a rational number. That's a ratio. Of course, it's a rational number. Okay, so we got this, all right? Just check, nah. Okay, all right, next one. Let's see. Okay, now, in this case, don't get thrown off by these huge numbers. Why do I say that? Yeah, just put it in the calculator, right? You know what I'm saying? So just like, just put this, you're allowed to use of a calculator on the region. So put this in and whatever number you see, remember the first lesson I gave you, right? If it terminates or if it repeats, then it's rational. So what I'm gonna do right now is press pause and use my calculator also. You know, I should, I should learn how to use the calculator on, the, uh, on this thing here. Maybe it would broadcast. Hold on, let me, let me give this a try, okay? All right, I'll be right back. Okay, so I hope you can see this. Uh, my calculator, all right, takes up like more than half the screen. Okay, I didn't realize that. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is just this. I'm just gonna put this in the calculator, see, see, see what's up. So 576, now, I don't know if you noticed, so you see this here? This version of a calculator requires you to put the, the numbers in first and then press this. Now, don't get thrown off by the two, I'm gonna explain, but this is, this is the square root thing, okay? Don't get thrown off by the two. I'm gonna explain this to you in today's lesson. Okay, so you press that, that's 24, okay? Let me write that down. Now, it says product, right? So, let's see. What about 684? Look at this, right? It doesn't end and it doesn't repeat, so that's irrational, right? Think about that. So what do you think the answer is gonna be? And I'm not asking about a numeric answer. The answer is gonna be, right, irrational, right? So it's irrational, you gotta be careful. It's gonna be one of four. Irrational because both factors are irrational? Not true, this is rational, so it's choice three, okay? All right. Let's see, which statement is not always true? Okay, now I really gotta read this because it's not always true. Not always true, okay, all right. Yeah, I gotta be careful with this question. Okay, I gotta read very carefully. Okay, the product of two irrational numbers is irrational. Ah, oh, man, not always true. Okay, all right, I already gave that, gave that away, right, because because you already remember what I said. So I'm just gonna put a check. I'm not gonna bubble this in, all right? If you were taking a test, I'm just gonna put a check here, okay? And then I'm gonna go from there. Uh, let's see, the product of two rational numbers is rational. That's always true. The sum of two rational numbers is rational. That's always true, right? We're looking for not always true. So, so, so let's see. The sum of a rational number and an irrational number is rational. Now. You see what I'm talking about here? When I talked about this here, right? There's the region's knowledge, right? And this is your true knowledge, right? So what does that mean though? Let's see, the sum of a rational number and an irrational number is rational. So rational and irrational. Oh, actually, that doesn't even refer to the last one. Let's see. Yeah, it's always irrational, right? The sum of a rational number, yeah, it's always irrational, so it's always true. So that leaves us with this, right? Now, let me, let me see if I can explain this further by giving you an example. So which statement is not always true? How, what's, how are we doing on time? Eh, where do I? Which statement is not always true? The product of two irrational numbers. Now, so remember that? Remember the example? So if I got square root of three times radical three, square root of two times square root of three, that's square root of six, right? That's irrational. However, if I do this, which the regions expect you to know, this is rational, right? So not always true, because it could be one or the other, okay? So yeah, if you got that right, good job, okay? These questions aren't, aren't super easy to answer. Now, let's do these tougher questions. So let me see. 
All right, so these are the numbers. So this is irrational. You see what I'm doing here, right? I'm like, so guys, this is, this is test taking strategy because you already know where these sort of questions are going to going, like what kind of topic they're going with, right? So if you see this, just write, you know what? That's irrational, that's irrational, that's rational, that's rational, right? Because that's actually just four. That's actually just three, right? Let me erase that. Now, what am I talking about? Okay, all right, so let's see. Which expression results in a rational number? I mean, I know for sure that n plus p will give me a uh, rational number. So is this, okay? Now let's, you know, I'm, I'm a, I try to be a very careful person, so I'm just gonna look. L plus m, irrational plus irrational, no. Uh, these two, no, that's irrational. Okay, and then p and l, yep, that's irrational, so there we go, okay, all right. So by the way, so one of the things that when you eliminate like this, it just gives you more confidence about your, the answer that you're putting in. Okay, so that helps, all right? Hopefully that, that, little, that little tidbit would help you. Okay, are we almost done? Two more? Three more? Aye, aye, aye. All right, I might not even do those last two. Okay, again, right? I put a star next to it because I know exactly why I put a star next to this. Tough questions. Maybe. All right. Which expression results in an irrational number? Now, you might look at this, right, at first glance. By the way, that's a, that's a rational. So it's not one. That's a rational answer. Okay. This one? No. Actually, look at choice four. If you look at this, this is just three times seven, isn't it? So that's 21. So that's, that's a rational number. We're looking for irrational, right? So these two are eliminated. Now, Let's pick between these two. So square root of five times the square root of five. You might say, well, you know, Mr. Ring, uh, that's irrational, that's irrational, so it has to be irrational. Uh-uh-uh, not true, this is the exception again. So you see how I'm picking questions that emphasize on the exceptions, okay? Because I want, I want you to look out for that when you take the regions exam. So what's the square root of five times the square root of five? Yeah, just five, right? Remember what I said? You take the square root away, right? So that's rational. So that leaves you with two only, all right? Classic, classic New York style, SAT style questions, right? Two only, three only, one, one, three, and four, two, three, four, none of the above, all of the above. You know what I'm saying? Like all those kind of questions. So it's two only. Okay, by the way, if I ever make, make a mistake, and I'm gonna make mistakes, okay, uh, email me and let me know, okay? I'll correct it. Now, this is not, yeah, this is, this is itself. This is in itself a question. So let me see, how, how am I doing on time? Yeah, I'm, I'm getting there. Okay, all right, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna finish today. So today's video is gonna be a little bit long, maybe 20 minutes, hopefully not. All right, is the product of two irrational numbers always irrational? Ah. Look at this, this is like a part two, part three question, right? There's no multiple choice, so how do you, how do you answer this question, right? Is the product of two irrational numbers always irrational? Okay, now I already, I already told you, right? The answer is sometimes, right? Because you can have square root of three times the square root of two, that's the square root of six, Right, but then you also have the exceptions. So this is square root of five. Okay, right? Is it always irrational? No, because sometimes you get this, sometimes you get that. Now I know what some of you are thinking. Well, okay, what do I write like, exactly? Right, you say no, because sometimes when two irrational numbers multiply, you get a, an irrational number, and feel free to give them an example. Okay, and then when you multiply two irrational numbers, sometimes you get a rational number and give them this example. Okay, all right. Now, I'm going, I'm gonna not do this. Okay, because I already told you earlier about this, right? Like this would be 45 and then you just simplify, right? So I'm gonna leave this alone. Okay, let's move on, all right? Um, cubic roots, it's on the test. Not often, and as a matter of fact, 
it won't be on the test as a cubic root in itself. So let me explain to you what a cubic root even is, right? So how is this symbol different from this symbol? Right? There's a number here. So if I show you this and I put 25 in there, you will say the answer is 5, right? But here's the thing. Actually, every single square root actually has a number there. It's 2. We just don't write it. Okay? Which means in any given math question, they could ask you about this. They could put a 3 there. They could put a 4 there. They could put a 5 there. Now, it'll, it'll, you almost never come across like the fourth root. Like, you know, you might, you might, but not the fifth root, definitely. Okay? So, what does it mean, right? That's the big question because when we do this, you might say, hey, Mr. Ring, uh, what's the square root of 100? And I would say 10, of course. Right? So the question is, what does a cubic root even mean? What a cubic root means, let's take the cube root of 8, for example, is something like this. Listen very carefully. What number multiplied by itself three times? Not twice. Again, I'm going to say this again. What number multiplied by itself three consecutive times, or three times, will give you the number 8? So what number, right? Same number, not like one times, two times, four. Like that's, that's not like, that's not it, right? Because those numbers aren't the same. What number, what, what same numbers when multiplied by itself three times will give you eight? Think about it. What do you think? Yeah, it's two. Two times two times two is eight. That's the cubic root. So the cubic root of eight is two. The square root of 25 is 5. The square root of 100 is 10. The cubic root of 8 is 2. So let me, let me throw a couple more questions your way. What's the cubic root of 27? Can you think of a number? Yeah, it's 3, right? Because the question is what number times itself 3 times right times itself times itself times itself will give you 27 well it's three okay that's what that means okay um i'm not gonna spend mo any more time with that all right one last question then okay okay all right what's the cubic root of one yeah it's one right one times one times one is one so it's one okay uh, why, why is it that then, you might ask, why is it then, Mr. Ring, why is it then that like we don't put a 2 here, right? Like normally, there's no 2 here. It's because every time you see this, every single mathematician, every high school student, they know that there's an invisible 2 up here. It's the square root, okay? So let me give you a similar example. So in 7th grade, right? If you see a, uh, the variable x and there's no exponent, what do you assume that to be? Yeah, there's a 1 there, right? So let's say there's 2a, right? It's not just 2ab, it's 2a to the first power, b to the first power. You see that, right? Also, if you just have a variable out here, there's actually a coefficient, right? The number that's in front of the variable. What number is that? Yeah, 1. Right? You see, you see how in math all, all the time there are some numbers that are so obvious that we don't have to write them. We don't have to write the exponents. Unless this is a second power, right? So on and so forth. Right? Same reason. We don't need the exponents here. Okay. Alright. I think that's it. So thanks for watching. Alright. 18 minutes. Yeah. Okay. It's alright. Okay. Alright. I'm gonna stop right here. Thanks for watching. Alright. And, uh, okay, have a good one. Bye-bye. OMG, that was so good.